hello and welcome to episode 6. So today we are going to be creating a basic entity that will give the player some health. So let's get started. Uh, first go into your game mode folder, uh, go into the code folder, and then we need a new folder. So we're going to call this entities, and this is where we'll put all the entities, uh, and let's create a C sharp file for our entity, so we'll call it a health usable uh, dot cs, there we go and health usable so it'll be in here and there we go we've got the little file for it so to get started we're going to need to import uh, we can just grab some stuff uh, we, can just, we just want to import that so we want sandbox uh, we want systems and then systems dot I don't, don't think we need that actually uh, right so we need sa using sandbox and then we're going to create a partial class called uh, health usable because that is that found nice public partial class health usable uh, and then let's oh sh we'll add some stuff here in a sec okay uh, I we need to add a library so this is gonna we're gonna put the class name uh, so we'll just call it end underscore health usable this is how it can be like ident identified in game uh, so to make it an actual entity we're gonna base it off prop so we're going to use the the prop class so now we can actually start adding some stuff so the first one we want to do is uh, a method for the spawn so public override void spawn so if you just press enter it will auto fill this out for us so now we actually have uh, the spawn method and we can write some stuff in here so let's do just a basic set model let me grab a model path so we're going to run the set model function uh, and then we're going to set it to this uh, model. So when we spawn it, we now have that model, and we also want to give it physics. So we're going to use the set up physics from model. So obviously there's a few options here. But we're going to do it from the model we actually gave it. And then the type is going to be physics uh, motion type. Phys motion type, and then just dot static. There's a few different options, uh, and then the other one is start to sleep. No, we don't want it to start to sleep. Basically, start to sleep would mean that the physics wouldn't be active when it spawns, but we don't want that. Uh, right, uh, so we can just do that for now. So we've got this basic. It'll just be. It'll basically just be a model with nothing else there, uh, with some physics. So let's go into our game uh, file, and we want to add a. We want a way to actually spawn this, because obviously it's not sandbox, so we can't just use the spawn menu. So let's copy this command, and we'll create a new command. Uh, let's call it. Uh, like uh, create test end. Obviously, you can put the command as whatever you want. I'll we'll change it here. Create test end. We can also change that. Uh, and then, what we need to do is we want to. Uh, yeah, we need we need that. Okay, so we want we need to get the caller like we've done in the uh, other tutorial. So we get the caller, and then we want to create the new entity. So we'll just do new health usable. Health usable is the class we just created, so all you have to do is you just do a new class and then we need to tell it where the position of the object should be. So we do position equals caller, which is the player who uh, ran the command, their position, and then we want to uh, put it, we want to spawn it in front of the player. So we do caller.rotation.forward times 50. So this is basically setting the position to the caller position plus uh, like the direction forward times by 50 and we don't need that though silly me right okay so if we do create test and then that will now spawn it so if we go open up our game mode and then we can run the create test end command and it will spawn just a basic box in front of us so we do create test and there it is we got we got a little box got some physics jump on top of it nice so what we can do now is, seeing as called it health usable, we can make it like be be usable and give the player some health. So to do that, uh, first we're going to need to add something into the player. So we're going to need to uh, put another method here. It's going to be public override void uh, simulate. So this is basically called if you hover over, it's called every tick. Uh, so it's you basically use it for like using like you uh, keys actions. Like if you wanted a uh, key to press to open and like uh, to like use 
Uh, I don't know, like give health or something, you'd pr uh, put it here probably. So we want to do tick. So we've got to just make sure we're actually running this. This is basically uh, check every tick to see if the player is trying to use stuff. So then we can use. And so uh, then it will basically allow the person, the player to use uh, an entity that is usable. Uh, that might be changed in the future, I'm not sure. Anyway, right, so save that. Uh, so now we need to actually make this into a usable uh, item. So we're going to use, so we need to uh, make this uh, class use the uh, in, I use interface. So now, as, as you can see, it's given us errors because we're not implementing uh, the interface methods. So those methods are public bool on use, uh, and then it's entity, and then user. So that's the person who's using it. Uh, if we hover, it will tell us what methods are not implemented, so we're not implementing the is usable one. So uh, yeah, let, let's quickly implement that as well. So it is usable. And then again, it's entity and user. Uh, so in this one we just always want it to be usable, uh, so it can be returned true. But obviously what we could do is we could make it so it uh, will ch can like check their health to see if it should actually give them it, uh, give them more health. So in here we need to make sure we return false. Uh, so it actually return something, because it always needs to return stuff. So let's uh, check first if the person using it is a player, so we'll do it if user is not player apply, uh, then return false, okay, so if the user is not a player then we don't want it to run any of this code, uh, so what we're going to do here, we're going to apply uh, health plus equals 50f, so what this is going to do is it's going to add 50 to the player's health, and then we want it to delete the, uh, we want it to delete the uh, entity, so now if we go to user, and now if we go to spawn it, sorry, and if you look on the bottom left, our health is 100, we use it, and it disappears, and it gives us 50 health. So, uh, a thing we can do is, if we return true here, then let me actually make so it doesn't delete it, so we're going to comment it out with two slashes. So, what the return true does is, if we if we hold E, you see it continuously increases the health in the bottom left. Whereas if we return false, it will only run it once. So if we press E, you'll see it only runs it once. So you can't hold it down. So that's something useful to know. Anyway, so what we want to do now is we we don't want the player to get up to we don't want them more to get more than a hundred health. So in is usable we can return. Uh, we can actually copy that because we don't want it to. Uh, we can just do it down here actually. Uh, user is player, uh, and then we'll do and. So uh, we're gonna so it will be usable if the user is a player, and ply dot health is less than uh, one hundred. Oh, let's actually we're gonna we're gonna need to reload for that. Let's say let's just say it's less than five thousand four hundred because that's what our current health is. Oh, that's what well, we'll be able to use one. So look, it's less than that, so we'll be able to use one, and then we should be able to use this one. As you can see, it makes a little sound tone as we can't. Right. Okay. So we've created a basic uh, entity that will allow uh, the player to use it and gain some more health, and we've got a little limit, so we can set that back to a hundred. So it won't ever let them get more than a hundred. Uh, we will need. We would need to clamp it, so we can clamp it here. So instead of doing plus equals, we can do. Uh, we can just actually sell it, so we do, uh, we need to import system, so we use math. So we could do math.clamp, uh, and this will clamp their health between, it will clamp the number between a cert, uh, two other numbers, so we do apply health. So we want the mini minimum number to be zero and the maximum number to be F, and we do health plus 50F. So this will set the player's health to, uh, uh, the player's health plus 50f, it will limit the number that it returns between 100 and 0. So it'll never go over 100. So that will make sure it is working properly. So another little cool thing we can add is if we spawn in, you know, it just looks like a plain box. So I'm going to like mistake this for a prop. So we can add, we can use the little glows to make it look a bit more 
uh, like like it's a usable item so we do glow state equals glow state dot on so we're just doing this on spawn uh, so glow distance start so oops, start equals zero and then glow distance end so this is the distance at which uh, it will render the glow so if you move so you can just up this but obviously you know you don't want to affect performance too much don't want, don't want to see like glows from ages away so we're doing glow color equals new color and it's going to be rgb value uh, so this, we just want it white obviously you can change this yourself that's rgb a sorry and then we do glow active equals true so now i've got that if we spawn another thing it will be glowing and obviously we can change these values set that to zero set that to zero and then we'll have a little red one Ooh, little red one and it looks more like some like item that you would use right obviously can't use them because of our health anyway so that's a basic uh, health usable uh, that's that for this episode uh, next episode we'll be going over some using icons in menus or hoods uh, thanks for watching, see you next time.